guys, what's going on? So I just quickly. Oh, oh fuck! See what happens when Joe goes away, mate. This is not going to be good. Yeah, the it's thing is, it actually probably had more gusto than Joe. I reckon it had more balls about it. Definitely, <laughs> balls of a field mouse, but <laughs> definitely still more tea. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, Joseph is not here. You meant to do this episode one forty eight. Well, I didn't even know what episode it was. Oh, it so. All right. Yeah. So here we are. Episode one forty eight. Joseph is over in the snow, over in Italy. So working really him. hard. He re- reckons he's working like six hours a day. I reckon that's going to be about a good three and a half if he's lucky. Definitely the hardest worker in the room, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a room with him and Scooter. He's still <laughs> the hardest <laughs> worker. Probably still the, the second hardest worker. <laughs> <laughs> so, what have we got today, Neve? Uh, so, we've got back in stock, uh, coming soon. Actually, there's no coming soon. Oh, sorry. It's back in stock, coming soon, uh, and new products. And then we've got Ask Neve. So, so pretty much this episode is going to be completely Ask Neve. Pretty much. I think we've got, we've got an absolute bucket load of questions here. So let's get straight into it, man. What have we got back in stock? Back in stock, we've got Devastate All Flavors. Awesome. You meant to say Devastate All Flavors because you meant to fucking copy no, I'm me. No, like I'm Joe not does. doing that. See, I'm going to let you have your own little Thank part you. of this because this is really like the Neve and Swole show, not Weekly Word anymore. Um, so you're going to do your part. I'm going to do my part, and it's going to roll. All right. Uh, switch all products. Switch all products, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I promise you we won't do that anymore. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's all. That's it? That's only two. Right. So we got a fair big shipment last week, so. Yeah. So, um, I don't know what new getting. products. What have we got? When are we getting uh, Barracuda and testing, you know? Test, I believe we air freighted it, so that should be here any day now, shouldn't it? Yeah. It was Barracuda. back in stock with Core, I believe, last week. So that should be here very, very soon. Um, Barracuda, that'd be on the next order as well. Mm. Uh, new products. So we've got Olympus Labs Tudka. Yeah, so tell the people a little bit about Tudka. You're the I mean, expert. I'm not uh, heavily um, into the science of it because I haven't really researched it much, no. but it's a big, a very good product for like kidney and organ health, yep, especially for those that are on uh, extracurricular supplements. <laughs> So your anabolics, um, yeah, they're great and very highly recommended for people who are yeah, on cycle just for your kidney and organ yep. health. Yeah, so that's, a re- and again, it's just a natural product, but very, very good for your, your liver and your kidneys. So. And there's not very many products actually on the market that is- uh, As strong and, and proven and, to yeah, work. And an actual um, mm. Tudka product on its own. So yeah. I think yep. I only know mm. yeah, one or two that are actually on the market. Yeah, 100%. So definitely, uh, yeah, hop on that if, and. Um, Obviously, if you're on something, but even if you're not, just for your general mm. uh, organ and kidney health. Uh, coming soon. What else have we got, mate? I'm going to say coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we've got Team Day wrist wraps. So we've got two new colours. Got the wrist wraps, red with... Uh, Pretty much all red. So what have you done anything different with these or are these exactly the same as the old TMJ wrist straps or have you changed a few things up? Because The thing is, I don't want this to be a Rag Joe episode. Well, it's <laughs> probably going to be. Like, he's not but here. The thing is, is uh, me being a power lifter. At heart. At heart, at heart. Yep. Not more, I just like lifting heavy shit. Yep. Um, I mean, I'm used to a bit of a uh, stronger, mm. stiffer. Because you have those big man wrists, right? Yeah, yeah. not big wrists. So. Big man wrists. Um, you need a bit of a stiffer and also longer. So these ones that you can actually wrap around nearly four times, so actually 60 centimetres. I think the old ones are yep. 45 centimetres. So they've actually gone a little bit longer, so 15 centimetres, so you get an extra wrap around your wrist and also a thicker material. Mm. Um, and so they actually give you a little bit more support, I find. Yep. So the other ones are, for me, the other ones are a bit short and a bit too stretchy. Yeah. These ones are uh, longer and stiffer. Yeah, definitely. I remember. Which is, which is two qualities you like in a minute. I like. <laughs> <laughs> it always has to be longer and stiffer. <laughs> So, yep. Uh, so <laughs> Moving on from that one. They're on the way. Uh, the Team J Arm Blaster. Yeah, so you you and Joe have obviously been testing this one for a while, naming yeah. Joe, because um, he needs as much trouble, help with his arms as mm. possible. Yeah, um, and uh, they've finally been ordered, yep. finally been produced, and um, yeah, they're actually getting done this week. I think they're actually finished, but then we created like a little carry bag, a mesh carry bag. For oh, the that's, all, that's always nice. Yeah, yeah. Do you get a packet of tampons <laughs> with your fucking carry bag as well? We'll see if we can put a little pocket in the top for you there, so. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the Unblast is coming with a nice little cat mesh carry bag now. We've added that on Jesus, there. Jesus, mate. Going above and beyond, I'll mm. tell you what, for our customers. A nice little carry bag for your arm blast. Yeah. And uh, you might have seen as well, just got released, uh, the bum bags have been officially released. Mm-hmm. And the How back- many have you got at home? Seven. Seven. One, One for each day, day of the week. Yep. yep. And uh, the backpacks have now been officially released as well. Nice. So check yeah, and out. those backpacks are awesome. You just use for travel and they're very, very well designed. I'll mm. tell you that. So. Yeah. One thing, man, one thing we didn't mention at the start is what sort of job Robbie's doing with your hair. No, it's going to be your hair. But no, but I reckon it's going to be yours. Like, you know, we well, get Robbie it cut pretty much at the same time. We do. We, I got eight 
thirty. Yeah, I think I got seven forty five this week or something. So yeah. yeah. What do, you yeah. Get, what do you get on the sides? I don't know. I just let Robbie do it. I think it goes down to like the skull, mm. like pretty much down to nothing. So I go 0. 0.5. No, I go 0 to 0. 0.5 on top. But th- that's the thing. Do you ever go in there and say, I want you to do this? I, yeah, sit, I, I literally sit my ass in the chair and whatever happens. I do, only because Rob normally does a number one on top. Yeah. But one for me just... My hair grows at a very tremendous rate. Yeah, mine used to. Yeah. It doesn't anymore. <laughs> so mine does. So it, well, by the time I go like to the fifth or sixth day, it's... I'm it's hat time. Yeah, it's hat yeah, time. Yeah. So I'm usually like that, but now that he does it like this, and it's taken very short on the side there, as you can see, it's good for a week. It's good. And then I'm going back, and after a week, people wonder why. Um, because I can. Mm. I'd love to see my boy. And I, I get to see you as well. It's exactly. like bro day Saturday. On a Saturday. On a Saturday. On a Saturday. All, All right. right. Ask Neve. Ask Neve. All right. So we've got an absolute arsehole of questions here. So Lindsay Kirkwood uh, from Kentucky in the US of A. For a female going through a cut, would it be beneficial to use uh, HPN's uh, PA7? I love the product, but want to make sh- sure it's still appropriate to continue, continue using. Thanks a ton. You guys are the best. I think she's mainly talking about you when she says about the best. <laughs> um, you, no, this is Ask Neve. I'm sorry. I'm not meant to do what Joe does. No, you can talk. No, I, no, I no, 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 Have you no. used PA7? I have. Well, I haven't, so you're best answer. You could definitely use PA7 year-round. You don't have to cycle off it. You could use it when you're cutting, when you're bulking. You could use it pretty much year-round as mm. much as you want to. And what does it do for you playing at home? Uh, it helps increase muscle muscle protein synthesis and increased muscle strength as well. Mm. So a really, really cool product, and you can definitely use it uh, year-round. Mm. But yeah, I was probably looking to it. I did have a sample. I had a few sample tubs. The li- yeah, the little, little, little ones. ones. Yeah, yeah. No, I um, used it especially... When I last went over to the US, I used it for a full two weeks, and mm. you'll n- notice the difference after taking it for a week, and, mm. and then used it when I got back as well. So I love it. It's just it's one of those products I take in and out of my stacks all the time. Mm-hmm. So, yep. all right, man. Why don't people actually put like their name is instead of their U- eBay? Oh, sorry, well, eBay. His Richie. But why isn't it over here? <laughs> all right, Richie from Nor- North Carolina. Yep. I think. Hey guys, I was wondering, is there an injury that has made you alter training how you deal with it? I have a significant left um, forearm slash elbow injury that hurts while pulling movements. I'm not sure how to give myself a good workout without creating muscle imbalances in my physique. Um, and I don't want to lift so light that I can't make gains. Thanks and stay massive. Um, recently I've had a sore wrist right mm. in there, which, which has actually affected my training because I haven't been able to do a lot of the, um, I can't really do anything when my wrist moves throughout the movement. Yes, so I can you. do So I can do like pushing movements, but then I yep. can't do like, like, uh, what was the next time I did? I mean, chest isn't too bad, but yeah. that's right, like bicep curls, like doing like, like twisting on a twisting, bicep yeah. curls, like doing upright rows when my wrist is moving, like that hurts, but then I, and even like doing um, side raises hurt my wrist because of that leading action. Yeah. But then I could do shoulder press and then I could do the machine, like with the, where you hold the little pan- handles and you got the pads on the outside and you like machine yeah. side raises. So I can do a lot of those kind of things. So, um, I'm not sure if it's kind of, I mean, it's almost understanding what movements before yep. you get to the gym, you know what hurts and what doesn't yep. hurt. 100%. Because I knew that as soon as I twisted my wrist, then it hurt. But yep. then I knew if I wanted to hit chest, I could use pec deck, I could use anything with the plate, um, like plate loaded hammer strength, for example, because I was sort of taking off the, having to um, stabilize it. Mm-hmm. I used wrist straps just to help support that. Um, I mean, a lot of things though, I mean, I've had sore quads when I've been, so had little niggles on quads or hammies or, or sore shoulders. I mean, I've always found something to work around it. Um, when I've got a sore quad, I can still train hammies. Yeah. It's um, the thing, I mean, you always, like, honestly, is there ever a time where you don't have some sort of niggle and training is absolutely perfect? I, I reckon I so. have it once every, like, few months where I have it maybe a week where something's, like, yeah. everything's amazing. And yeah. then something else will come up. Like, I've got it, my shoulder's killing me at the moment, so training yeah. chest is really tough, but you find the exercises that are going to work for you. And in between that, you know, I always have issues with my forearms and I they get really sore and really tight to the point where I have to go and see someone about it and then they get fixed. And it's just a constant, you know, grind of making yourself feel better. Um, You need to look at what the source of your your injury is and get it fixed, but then train around it and find out what, like Steve said, find out what exercises Mm. you can actually do that aren't going to affect it too much. I think as well, it's just different things. Like you can drop the weight and just do more reps for a time. Yeah, definitely, man. If you've got a bit of a sore quad, you might not be able to do back squats with 180 kilos on your back, but you might better do leg extensions with a light yeah, weight for 20, definitely. 25, 30 reps, get that volume in. So yeah. 
There's, no, there's nothing. You know, he did mention about not lifting, you know, light, but there's nothing wrong with going a bit lighter and, like yeah. you said, increasing the uh, increasing the repetitions to get the same amount of volume. And there's more than than one way to skin a cat, as my but dad always used to say. So the other thing as well is I'm not a physio, but getting blood to that injured muscle. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You haven't got a uh, forearm elbow injury. Depending on what that is, but the thing is, like when I um, did my lat, as a lot of you people would have seen a couple of years ago, when I tore my lat, my mm. tricep. The doctors or the physio said straight away, as soon as I went in there, he's like, go back to the gym straight away and start training. So a lot of physios would have said, or a lot oh, of rest, rest, people rest. said rest, but he yeah. said, no, you need to get back in there, start with 10, 15, 20% of your normal weight. Yeah. Start getting blood through the, and that'll help with the recovery process. That's why you see a lot of AFL footballers, if they they're, do a hamstring, yeah. they're out walking and doing slight jogs after a week and they're walking, they're on the exercise bike, yep. trying to get it moving, trying to get blood back to that t that muscle just to help with oxygen rich blood. So Yeah, and to get the nutrients back in there, they're gonna help with recovery. So mm -hmm. man, just find a way that you can train around that injury. That's the best way to do it. Um, all right, Martin, how do you spell, say that one, mate? Come on. Sumsky. Sumsky. From uh, San Diego in California, what would you guys say the biggest challenge difference is in changing your, changing your workouts from powerlifting goals to aesthetic goals? I'd say this one is for you, big man, because I've never done powerlifting in my life. Um, I think the best thing is, is you still need to lift heavy. Yeah, I mean, that's 100%. the thing that a lot of people take away. Powerlifting, um, I mean, powerlifting, you don't do a whole lot of singles, obviously. You sort of, you try and peak on, on meat day. So you do a lot of th like triples and fives and doubles and those kind of things. I mean, I think you should still keep some aspect of heavy lifting and heavy, um, like sort of five to six rep range for your main compound movements. Mm. I don't think there's anything wrong with working up to a heavy set of five on a bench no, press man, or a heavy definitely set of five not. on a dead or, or, or a squat. I don't think working up to about a five. I don't think, I don't think, I th even like a triple, I don't think there's anything wrong with working up to that no. every once in a while. It's just you're not doing it all the time yeah. like you do with powerlifting. Yeah. Um, the main thing as well is, if you're doing powerlifting, if you want to do a squat, you're doing things that are going to help with your squat. Yeah. So you're not going to do things that, you're not doing things just thrown in there generally. Like a lot of um, powerlifters, if they're doing squats, they'll do accessory works to get better at the squat. Yeah. Whereas they won't do a lot, of, so a lot of guys won't do leg extensions or hamstring curls or calf raises, they'll mm. go do accessory movements. So, um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not really, I don't really, honestly don't think it's really changing that much. I don't think so either, man. It's changing your rep range a little bit, changing the volume. You're probably going to sure change the rest periods a little bit. Making sure you're hitting those those target muscles directly. So yeah. you're actually hitting biceps directly for yep. a good 45 minutes. You're not just throwing them on for a set or two at the end of a workout. Um, really, I think personally, it comes down to diet mm, and just definitely. how you're dieting. Powerlifters yep. have a bad rap of being a bit overweight. Don't really, carry, don't really care, um, count too much. So 12 to 14% is mm. prime. Um, I mean, if you want to look like that, that's fine. But I think that the main thing that I've noticed when I've sort of gone from powerlifting to aesthetics is I, I had the f base foundation there already. Yeah. Um, it was really just getting that body fat off to actually see what was underneath. Yeah, man, so. absolutely. And you'll find, especially a lot of people that go from like body, uh, sorry, powerlifting to like aesthetic type, mm. you know, training is they, they adapt to it very quickly because they've got that solid base and foundation from powerlifting. You see a lot of guys like Dan Green, for example. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, he looked, he's, well, he has got an aesthetic physique, but, but, he he's, does, still but he's still jacked, jacked and he's lean. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, a lot of people want to look like that kind of physique because he looks like he fucking left the house. Um, so yeah, I mean, a lot of things, is he just control his cal calories a bit more than, yeah. than the next guy, so. Yeah, definitely. All right, Spencer Thomas uh, from, man, I don't, in Illinelli in, in Southwest Wales in the UK, what advice would you give on getting over mental issues of doing a reverse diet from 130 kilos body weight to 79 with still having stubborn fat being on a solid 1700 calories a day for a few months with no joy in reducing the body fat on low calories. Um, your advice on the reverse diet and adding more calories, but would I what, what, and but I'm worried about getting out of shape um, again, like it was before, and are you getting over the mental block of doing this? Thanks, guys. Stay massive. P you got PS. You guys are the fitness industry yodas. Uh, this I love this saying, man. You are the tits. Nothing better than good set of tits. No. Um, <laughs> definitely, man. If you're on, like, if, no, this is the thing right, is, is, is I apologize. The thing is, is if you're actually on a, a controlled, focused calorie-based diet, yeah, you're not going to get fat again because no. you know what you're increasing. You know how much you're increasing it by. You know that if you're slowly, you might be just increasing, all of a sudden you might be increasing your avocado from 
50 grams to 70 grams yeah. per serve. You might be increasing your rice from 100 grams to 125 grams. Mm. If you make those small changes, you're going to be very slowly, and ma- even if it's just very small changes yeah, every absolutely. couple of weeks, you're going to be slowly increasing those base calories. You're not just going whacking it back up no. to 3,000, which is where you'll start getting fat again, but you want to build up that calorie expenditure, yeah. um, build up that base again. Ooh. Yeah, so you're, if you're on 1,700 calories now, man, you're probably going up to, say, what, maybe like 1,850 um, at probably, a maximum, probably, yeah, probably even only a, eight, yeah, eight, like even go up to eighteen hundred for a couple of weeks, and then you know you should slowly once you start getting hungry again, it's just increase it again and increase it again because seventeen hundred calories isn't especially uh, you know for a male isn't a lot of calories, so you definitely want to be increasing those. So you don't you need to be worried about getting fat, and even if you do, man, like I. Like, I know you're the same, you know, Mm. you don't count your calories anymore. If I feel like I'm putting on a little bit of body fat, I'll just do some cardio. Mm. You know, increase my cardio a little bit so you're increasing your your caloric expenditure. Um, And that's going to keep you relatively lean as well. So Mm. that's what I think a lot of people make the mistake. They focus all on the weight training and not do as much I think what it's probably, probably, Spencer, when you were 130 kilos, I doubt you would have been... A lean 130 kilos. No, but but, uh, you wouldn't have been watching what you're eating. You wouldn't have been counting what you're eating. Or you wouldn't have been worried about what you're putting in your mouth. So yeah. you had no control. You probably were eating a lot more than before on the wrong kind of foods. Yeah. Whereas now you're eating the right foods, so you're not going to slip into that hassle again. So yeah. as Joel said, like 10% was probably a good base to go to, 18, yeah. 1850, yeah. just start with very slowly. I mean, that's when you sort of 25 grams of carbs right there, which is fuck all, like extra in a day, or 25 grams of protein extra in a day. So yeah. I mean, that's an extra one scoop of oil and whey a day. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you um, break it down, it's not even, you know, 25 grams of carbs is yeah. absolutely nothing. So. Mm. Um, all right, so I hope that answers your question, man. Just the thing is with the mental side of it, don't get caught on being worried about what could happen. Um, mm-hmm. You know, just just follow the process. If you feel like you're getting a little bit fat, just just do something about it. Control the calories, do some cardio, keep the training up. It'll happen for you, man. It just takes time. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the problem. And we've spoken about this in podcasts. Haven't mm-hmm. we? Everyone yeah. just wants the results now instead of just keep following that process. And that's so. the thing is you're probably not losing any extra weight because you are at 1,700 calories. Yeah, your, your body's, body's just, just maxed out, so man. Yeah, it's starving. What you're so. doing isn't working and it's not going to work any further, so you have to make a change. So. Yeah, you have to reverse diet up a little bit. And then once your calories get up high enough, you can, you can diet down again. Mm. So, um, Jason Anstey, uh, the old bastard from Perth. I recently found the traditional style deadlifting was, has essentially fixed my sore back issues in the past, but I still have issues posture wise, the pronounced curve in my lower back creating a pelvic tilt and this shits me. Um, as it pushes my stomach forward, apart from walking around like I have a carrot up my ass to correct the posture. Are there any exercises that would help this issue? Um, what? What the hell is FYIW? And now part of my leg routine, um, and I hope that this will help uh, as I get stronger. Thanks, fella. Thanks, massive thanks, fellas. Um, postural stuff, man, is all just. Do you want to answer this? Oh, or you not? can. You can. No, so postural stuff all has to do with muscle imbalances, man. So you need to look at, you know, what muscles are too tight that are causing that pelvic tilt, uh, which would probably be that your glutes are a little bit tight and the hip hip flexors are obviously a little bit weak. So it's not a matter of of, um, you know, just, you know, deadlifts are great for keeping everything strong, but you need to look at what muscles are too tight and what muscles aren't and, and loosen one, loosen some off and get, get the other ones strengthened up at the same time. So, and that's the same with postural stuff everywhere. If everything's not, not lined up and balanced perfectly as far as muscles go, obviously you've got agonists and antagonists, which are the, the mirror muscles. If they're not at the same length, um, and same strength, that's where you're going to cause an imbalance. Mm. Um, so that's what you need to do is really just look at, okay, what muscles do I have to stretch out? Uh, and this is going to take time. You need to stretch them out and strengthen up the other ones on the other side so they can mm. be pulled back to the length that they need to be yeah. at. And I've been to, I know this, that, that they get a bad rap, but my Cairo is very good for helping me with this. And I haven't actually been to them for a few years. I saw the Cairo once a week when I was deadlifting, when I was mm. doing deadlifting. Yeah. Um, when I was doing deadlift, my deadlifting meets and, and strength quests. So that was like four or five years ago. Mm. The thing is, is um, she wasn't, it was a, a lady, um, she wasn't actually um, one of those average chiropractors who yeah. fucking say the world's going to fall down because you're lifting weights. Yeah. She actually did come out and watch a few of the strength quests and took, um, so she was actually keen on weightlifting and, yeah. and those kind of things. So she didn't see it as a bad thing. Um, she wanted me to try and help me get my deadlift stronger. So she actually came to me to try and work with me because she wanted to get me to get my deadlift stronger. Mm. Um, but yeah, there were massive things about like my, my muscles weren't actually firing and my hamstrings weren't contracting 100% because yeah. just like of bits out of my back, like she cracked my back. Have they done to you when you lay on your stomach mm. and they get you to 
pull your, your hamstring up and your hamstring twitches and then yeah. crack your back and then you and it feel stronger and, again. And it yeah, yeah. So stuff like that. She used to do that a lot. My right side of my hips was like an inch higher than my left mm. because I'd sat on my wallet yeah. as a landscaper and as, at school, I always put my wallet in my back, back right hand pocket. So a lot of stuff like my hips were imbalanced that way, which affected my posture. Mm, of course. And as well, just from over the years, I did have that. So she used to fucking, um, yeah, I used, mine used to be quite pronounced, but then she's pushed my, my hips back under and, and yeah. cracked it back into place. I'm not saying go get a chiro, but probably see a chiro as well. We'll see if it is that any imbalances that have just occurred over the years, because if you haven't been checked out, then there's... Uh, it's, it's just, that's how it happens, though, man. It's over the years, whether it's, you know, you slash forward on a computer or whatever it is, is you, you, your body just gets used to being in that position. Mm. Um, and the muscles will, will you know, if you, you, you have your shoulders forward like this, your chest is contracted, those muscles are just going to keep getting tighter and tighter mm. and tighter. Uh, so what you need to do is obviously release these and strengthen up all the muscles through your back to pull everything back into alignment properly. Mm. So that's that's what you need to do. Whether you go and see someone professionally about that, which I would probably recommend, um, or you just start by stretching out and see see what happens after there. But you know, there's nothing wrong with going to see something about a problem. Um, that's definitely easy fixed. You know, postural stuff can be fixed very, very easily. Yeah. I think you're gonna find more so that you'll get more help from seeing like a massage therapist and a chiro than you will doing exercises to try and help it. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. you get, mate, go and see a professional, it's gonna be fixed mm. a hell of a lot quicker. Yeah. Uh, Alan Kim uh, from the six, I have a set of supplements I use, basic protein, creatine, and aminos. I f my, if my focus is body recomposition, would you suggest replacing one of those with something like a test booster, pump, or fat burner? I'm 38, my T levels are fine for my age, uh, I'm sensitive to stimulants, and I have to keep under 150 milligrams per serve. Um, Alan, you've pretty much answered all that stuff yeah. in that question, man. Yeah. Um, um, if yeah, your yeah. test levels are fine, you don't need to worry about test yeah. boost number one. Definitely protein, creatine, and obesity layer are the top three products I generally give to any individual. Yeah. Depending on who they are. I mean, if it's if it's a girl, I'd take that creatine out and probably replace it with something else. Um, but See, yeah. I don't even sell creatine to females. Yeah, but, but, just, but yeah. generally protein, yeah, the three you're on at the moment, yeah. especially with body recomposition. The thing with it is like creatine is going to help with, with building muscle and gaining yeah. muscle, which is going to increase and stoke your metabolism anyway from having more muscle mass. Yeah, definitely. Um, your muscle is like a furnace, so it burns more muscle than someone who has less mm. muscle on their frame. Yep. So the thing is, by increasing muscle mass through the use of creatine, you're going to be burning more calories throughout the day at your BMR anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd still keep that in. I mean, you, yeah, you, you don't want to look at losing muscle. You want to try and keep and keep building muscle. You, mm. you don't want to look at losing muscle by a fat burner. So. No, and that's the thing. You don't. No one says to lose weight, you need to take a fat burner. It can help, but if you're sensitive to caffeine, or sensitive to stimulants, it's probably not one of those things for you because ninety percent of fat burners have got some sort so of stimulant if, in there. If you are on a um, on a on a uh, budget, mm. this, um, like even look at like a something like acetyl carnitine, which yep. is which is very Definitely. cost effective. So we've got crea uh, creation alcopure, which is thirty nine ninety five within Australian dollars, but mm. very cheap per serve. Yeah. Um, even mix that with the black coffee. Yeah. If you if you stimulant um, sensitive sens yep. uh, sensitive and have that before your morning cardio your fasted cardio you have those two mixed together um, down that and then go for your cardio or just have your little kind of beforehand mm. if you don't feel like you need a coffee black coffee so. yeah definitely man that's that's probably the only thing you could add I would add um, you've got your aminos you've got your creatine um, like Steve said if you're on a budget man stick with that if your test levels are good for your age then you don't need to take a test boost, obviously it's going to help, it'll, it'll lift them up um, a little bit higher, but it's not essential. There's no rule that says you need to have a test booster. Yeah. So, uh, all right, James died. Um, hey fellas, Jimmy from the ADL. Uh, my partner is six months post baby and starting to go to the gym and just walking on the treadmill. Any tips for getting her onto the weights and what would be good for her? Um, thanks guys, PS, no health issues. Um, I think my, a lot of girls feel uh, kind of a bit Oh, Self-conscious yeah. being in a in a gym. Mm. Um, a lot of these gyms nowadays do have um, women's only parts of the yep. gym. I know one that I train at quite frequently has has a women's only gym. So, mm -hmm. but then again, not a lot of the girls do. Maybe I don't reckon it might be 60, 40, like sixty training in the main gym, maybe forty training in the women's only gym. Um, so I mean, there's those kind of things. But I mean, you go to any gym and every single girl is there. I mean, it's a self. It's it's an easy thing for us to say, like just train, do it. Do it. Yeah. But, the thing is, is I've been training for six, like sixteen years in a gym, yeah. And you've been training long, probably longer. Mm, than I said to someone, I've been like doing weights for like eighteen years. Yeah, but the thing is, Ridiculous. is I don't take notice of other people in the gym. No, like people think that guys go to the gym to stare at girls, and maybe some do. But the thing Man, is, is most, like, like, I don't I'm notice girls there, and I don't look at girls there. I just no. train like. Uh, 
it's not like it's a fucking I've been doing it for 16 years six seven yeah. days a week seeing girls in the gym every day I don't take notice like I don't I you're almost desensitized yeah, to you it. don't think twice about no, it. no it's just okay there's someone else in the gym great so um, so I mean the thing is, is is really I don't think anybody cares like nobody nobody's looking at you that's the thing mm. if she look I would try and convince her that it's gonna be she, if she's looking at losing weight um, you know, weight training is going to be just as effective for her to lose weight as what cardio is. If, be, especially if she's walking on the treadmill. More, more beneficial, really. Definitely more beneficial. Um, she's going to burn through a lot more calories. She's going to feel a lot stronger. Um, her posture is going to be better, like we were talking about before. Um, having more yeah. having more muscle, burn more calories throughout the day. Yeah, you after know. After your weight training, your metabolism is stoked for a longer period of time than after yep. cardio. And, and you know, think, things like, you know, picking up your, you know, your new six-month-old baby is going to be a lot easier. It makes, you know... There's so many benefits to doing it, but the thing is she has to want to do it herself as well. You can't force her into doing this. So you need to try and you know explain to her what the benefits are. And then even if, to get her started, man, just go and see a, a personal trainer at your gym and just say, look, I just want to get started, get them, make sure obviously they're good because you know, as much as I don't want to say this, there are a lot of really bad personal trainers mm -hmm. out there. Uh, and get them to start her up on a program that she can start doing a couple of times a week. And once she gets started, she won't want to stop. So, another but thing, she, you can't is, force her to do yeah. that either. Another thing is, is even if, if you're at home and obviously a bit time bound with a, a young child, mm. is get a set of TMJ um, resistance bands. Yeah. Buy a small set of weights. You can get those adjustable weights or yep. you can get a small set of 50 kilo weights set with a barbell and dumbbells. Mm -hmm. And just do some stuff from home. I mean, you can pretty much, you can do full body workouts. You can do a full body workout three times a week on top of at home while the six, I don't, I don't know, six month old, so I'm sure they just, while they're sitting around, they can. <laughs> yeah, they don't move a lot, man. <laughs> uh, after six months, they start moving a little bit. Before that, no, they're But I'm sure you've got a bit of time while, while the baby's asleep or while the baby's playing and it's cold or whatever, you can just sit there and. Yeah, Probably. definitely, man. So yeah, for sure. And now that's if you're time poor. But if you are, if you do have time to go to the gym like this lady does, even, to work even, on the treadmill, like I you even train with her, yeah, just to show her what to do and, and take her through your workouts and, and say mean, this is what I do and explain why it's beneficial. But you know, you have to, you know, you have to explain to her what the benefits of it are. You know, not just say you know start doing weights. You know, you have to like obviously we've already spoken about it, but you need to convince her. She has to want to do it. Otherwise, it'll get three months down the track and she's not going to want to do it. And she'll just stop anyway. Mm. So make her, you know, explain to her the benefits and, and make it more on her to actually want to start doing weights. Mm. All right, Neve, so we're into the Facebook questions. So these ones I reckon we're going to fire through pretty quick. When does Joel get his own show? Now, look, man, I don't want my own show. I want it, the Neve and Swole show is going to take off one yeah. day, I'm telling you. One so day it will. One day it will. Um, it's just when Joe starts taking a few more holidays more frequently, going to the snow and well, going to the He's competing beach. in the middle of the year for like a few I reckon we, could, we just get it up and running while he's not here. Or maybe, think, or maybe we need to think of a new concept. No, I think the concept's there, man. It's just you and I just talking shit. Yeah. Trent wants to start one with me as well, but that's purely, it's it's going to be like R-rated, yeah. I think. It's, it's just not going to be good. So uh, the kids, you know, have to watch that at home when the kids go to bed. <laughs> um, okay, Nick Hanna. Um, for someone starting contest prep, what are your go-to or recommended supplements? Uh, as I said, like the base ones before, uh, your um, protein, creatine, aminos. I mean, the thing is, is, how how long how big is a piece of string? How long is a piece of string? Yeah, what's your budget? Yeah, man? like Jesus, we could tell you everything. I definitely to take, like at the start of a contest prep, I wouldn't look at bringing a fat burner in. I mean, I'd, I'd keep that sort of maybe eight weeks out, six weeks out. Try and keep that as like yep. a, another tool in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. Is that Joe's analogy? Yeah, yeah. but the thing is, you've got your stuff like you've got your core hard. I mean, like I would if like to me personally, if it was a contest prep. I would be taking quite a few supplements just to make yeah. sure my body was working optimally. Like you'd have your multivitamins, you'd have like 100%. your core multi. 100%. Then you have like your nectar for your organ and, yep. and health. And then you've got your, your core omega, your fish oil. Then you've got your core heart or your um, alpha prime and core RX for your cortisol levels yeah, and, and your estrogen. And then you've got... The more that you have, rather than you know your internal organs and everything functioning a lot better, the, the better that prep's going to be for you. Yeah, and then you've got um, your gut right. I mean, yeah. So that's the thing. It's yeah. going to help, you know, help with all that smaller stuff rather than just, you know, I need to take a fat burner and a test booster and all, all that mm. sort of stuff is look at the internal organ stuff and make sure that that yeah, is working it, yeah, optimally. Especially because you're going to be on a calorie deficit, you're going to be training a lot harder, you're going to be start doing a lot more cardio, your body's going to get very run down. So that's yep. why you need to make sure that your, your multivitamin mm. is on point and your, and your fish oil and those kind of things, which you're going to keep your body healthy while you're in that depleted state. Yeah. last thing you want to be doing is getting sick eight weeks out or six yeah. weeks out and not and being able to train or feeling run down or feeling flat and that's when a lot of people start missing sessions or missing mm, cardio because they're tired yeah. And, yeah. and those kind of things. So, um, yeah, I mean, you obviously got your bare minimums, but then definitely I'd, I'd look at, yeah, like your core multi, your core omega, gut right, mm. quad RX, those kind of products. Yeah. 
Definitely. Uh, Aiden MacArthur, for someone looking to switch their training to focus on weightlifting and compound lifts rather than the traditional hypertrophy, what would be your top recommendations in designing a training split program to match? Man, I don't know, like, what, just before we get into this question, I don't know what it is with people who, you know, talk about hypertrophy training and, like, it is how it's different to compound lifts. Like, mm. every one of my, I classify myself as training hypertrophy 90% of the yeah. time. But I have compound lifts would take up 90% of my program as well. So yeah. I don't know. I think a lot of you guys are getting it mixed up with what you do with training. There's no different. Obviously, weightlifting is different that you're, you know, you're going to be doing Olympic type lifts. But for your standard tra like, you know, training or even powerlifting, it's all mm. the same stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think you guys, you know, may be doing a lot, little bit too much of an isolation type movements instead of doing a lot of those compound movements, which are going to grow that muscle. So like, like I've already said, and I've said on quite a few weekly uh, weekly words, is I always. Start with the main compound movement of your work. Yeah, definitely. So you know, that's bench, squat, deadlift, overhead press. Mm -hmm. So or a variation of those exercises, mm -hmm. um, and do them for your lower rep range. So, but as we said, start with twelve reps, ten reps, eight reps, six reps, five reps. Like, yep. So you work. You're not just starting at five sets, five doing five reps. You d you are hitting that hypertrophy range to begin with as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, there's, there's no black and white yeah, with training. So, I mean, it's the thing is, is, is if you're looking at getting strength, the thing is you have to get into that strength training reps range though. Mm. So you have to be working up to that five to three rep range. Yep. The thing is, then I go to accessory movements, which are still compound lifts though. Yeah, oh, definitely. So they could be, bench press could be flat bench, then my accessory lifts could be dumbbell incline bench yep. for like four four sets of eight to 10 reps. Mm -hmm. Could be doing dips, you yeah, could be doing then, decline then doing benches. doing weighted dips, yep. decline bench, barbell bench. Those probably four exercises I'd do there. Then I'd go on to pec deck yep. or, or cable crossover or, or low cable flies or, or those kind of things. Um, like pull over dumbbells, those kind mm. of things, which are more isolation movements, and I do them at the end. Yeah. No matter what my goal is, that's how I structure every single training session. Yeah, definitely. Um, if I'm feeling a bit sore or my, my, my shoulders are a bit sore, I'm feeling a bit not really up to it, then I probably won't hit those kind of reps on that opening exercise. Mm. Um, I'll cut it back a bit, but that's still how my work, I always hit a main exercise first. Definitely. Accessory, finish with isolation. Or I'll warm up with an isolation purely for warm up purposes. Yep, 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 yep. Get the muscle not, firing not properly count that, But I won't count that as an actual exercise. No. So I might do um, cable crossover to start with, or pec deck to start with, but, it but purely, count. purely as a pump exercise, yep. three sets of 15, three sets of 10. Yep. Just to get the blood working and the muscles firing. So yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, Josh Blake, who the fuck is this guy? You know, <laughs> oh man, I don't know. Like, I do. I, 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 I've heard of a guy named Josh Blake, but surely he's not dumb enough to send a question, is he? Yeah. Like he sits next to me, two seats down from you, and he has to ask a question on Weekly Word. Um, what are your daily macros? People want to know what, how much the biggest boys eat. Fuck. When was the last time you counted your calories? The thing is, Joel and I are the only two people in the warehouse in the office that don't count our calories. I no. Think. No, and like, I haven't done it for, honestly, it was like a grace, a saving grace for me that I saw, I'm, you know, I'm going to stop counting my calories. I eat about, you know, the right amount of protein, right amount of carbs. I have no idea no. Um, how much I actually eat. So I think, you know, one of the meals I ate last week, Blakey put it up on his um, story. I think that was like 1,700 calories for, mm. for a meal. So, man, honestly, I don't know. I don't care. I go... These days with my food, I go on how I feel. If I feel like I've got to eat a little bit more carbs, I'll eat a bit more carbs during the day. Um, I try and hit around about the same amount of protein every day, around the same amount of fat, um, and then my carbs are going to go up and down depending on how I'm feeling. So mm. it's really, and the thing is, man, I eat the same shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I have for a long time now. So it's like literally, I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about what the calorie number is. It's just the same intake of food. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been meaning to like sit down and work out exactly what it is just for like to see what to, to answer this question, but I've got mm. no idea, man. Honestly, no idea. And you know, you know, like what do you eat? Six Subway cookies a night? So my diet, I follow carb backloading. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any direct carbs throughout the day. Now, um, see, this is the thing. I don't even worry about that. Like yeah, you I'll eat carbs fucking all day. Now. I do. And uh, this is the diet that I've found worked best for me. And since I've done it, I've leaned up again in the last couple of weeks. Yep. Funnily enough, because all, I have my carbs all back post-workout and I can eat really what, what you, I want. What are you eating post-workout? Well, my, my diet is I'm having two shakes while I'm at work. Mm -hmm. Both of them have two big tablespoons of peanut butter. So there's a lot of, so there's four tablespoons of peanut butter there in a day. So that's probably 100 grams of fat right there. <laughs> just from, so I mean, it's pretty so high hey, we're, we're at like what? We're at 9,000, 900 yeah, calories. Just, just from in, peanut butter. Yeah, just from peanut So I mean, that's butter. where we're at there. Then it's a cup of blueberries, two scoops of raw one salted caramel, uh, unflavored maple syrup. Yeah. Like uh, un no calories. Uh, no calories. Yeah, yeah. Maple syrup. So I have two of those a day while I'm at work. 
Then I have another meal, which is chicken and salad. Mm -hmm. So like baby spinach, um, sun-dried tomatoes, olives, cucumber, capsicum, those kind of things. So I yeah. have one of those. If I'm hungry, really hungry, I'll have another one of those. Mm -hmm. But generally, like today, I've only had that and two shakes. Yeah. Then I'll go train. Post-workout is either a foot-long sub, chicken and bacon this sub. This is what I'm talking about. Is either a foot-long chicken and bacon sub. From so have way. extra bacon on the sub, right? Because people are going to want to write this down, mate. They're no, I don't have any bacon. I've, I'll, that's the other one. So okay, I have a foot-long right. chicken and bacon sub, mozzarella cheese, uh, avocado on there, sun-dried tomato, olives, barbecue sauce, salt and pepper. Is this like when you when the when the, the subway person brings yeah. this out to you? Is this like like that thick? <laughs> and three chocolate chip cookies. Like, do you dislocate your jaw to eat that thing? No, it's not too bad. You only have three cookies. Yeah, three. Chocolate. See, I like because you we we spoke about this last yeah. week. Yeah. And like he inspired me to go and get Subway, mm. and I hadn't eaten Subway okay. for like so long, and I had it on Sunday, and I couldn't resist getting six mm. cookies. The thing I had to is, get extra meat and all this shit, and. I was, wasn't hungry for a few hours after that, man, yeah. I tell you. The last thing is it fills me up yeah. and it helps replenish everything. And because I've used it post-workout, it's helping replenish my glycogen mm. stores. So I'm finding it's not putting any body fat on me. Yeah, of course not. No. Um, the thing you'll also notice from me is with my foods, I get like addicted to certain foods yep. for certain... Uh, amount was, of time and yeah. then you'll eat then it. I'll until, eat it and then yep. I'll, like I had sushi for a long time there. Yeah, you were eating, it was a while where you were eating yeah. like Coles cookies yeah. every afternoon yeah. at three o'clock. So stuff like that. So I've gone through yeah. phases. So that's my current phase now, but it's back to what I was doing when I was at my leanest. Yeah. Obviously I'm not as strict as what I was back then because mm. I wasn't having this meal. Yeah. Or I have the um, barbecue burger from McDonald's. I haven't had that yet. With, um, but I add an extra beef patty and add Hang on, hang on. Now. Can you just, sorry, about, we, we're gonna, getting away from the questions here, but can you just tell me what happened oh, when yeah. you ordered but this? I add extra, so I add extra bacon, extra beef patty, yep. then comes barbecue sauce and yep. all that kind of stuff. And then I get large chips and a Coke Zero. I'm Amazing. And it's McDonald's. It's fantastic. So the thing is, last... Yes, I think tell last, this story because this yeah. is the best fucking story ever. <laughs> last Friday night, I went there and I said, um, can I have my barbecue bacon burger? And I'm like, fuck. I was looking at it. I'm like, yeah, I like bacon. And I was thinking, oh, I could add a burger too. Like another beef burger, or something. and I'll add a beef burger, and then I'm like, then whatever. Then I got my large chips and Coke Zero, and then she's like, whatever it was, eleven ninety. I'm like, fuck, that was cheaper than normal. <laughs> I'm like maybe it's some kind of like deal. They like, got a deal. Got some on. deal. If I fucking just double the contents of my burger, you know, it get gets some, cheaper. Yeah, it's cheaper. I don't know. Two, two for the price of one. Yeah, I don't know. It's like when you get Subway, you get more Subway cookies, and the price comes yes, down. Yeah. The thing is, I did that, and then I'm like, fuck yeah. So eleven ninety. And like, they took a little bit extra to make it, and I'm like, oh, well, don't know what that was for anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, don't ask I had questions. I go down to the parking bay and wait, and then anyway, she brought it out, got home, sat on the couch, opened it, and they fucking gave me no burger. It so was, you went, ve like, your meal was pretty much vegan. Well, I had bacon still. It had but it had bacon. No, no patties yeah, at all. Yeah, it had bacon and cheese and barbecue sauce. And it was, like, fucking flat. It had been, like, it had been run over 17 times. It yeah, like, can you, well. like, this is, like, McDonald's, you make burgers. Yeah. You're like you've got one job. Yeah. Don't fuck it up. And then large chips, which you eat in about five mouthfuls. Yeah, yeah. It does, like, mate, Darcy will knock over a whole pack of those <laughs> chips in like three minutes. Yeah. So, but that's why we never post. -work. And if I'm still hungry, I'll make another shake later. Did on you go time. back to McDonald's and get another burger? No, nah, I couldn't be, be fucked. I couldn't yeah, be bothered. Yeah, I would have done the same thing. All right, uh, Kieran Tag. What? Uh, how is the clinical dose the same for a 60 kilo pushy cat as a 130 kilo swallow bear? Um. I mean, the thing is, when most companies do this, they'll yeah. do it on a lot of just like an untrained subject, or, or they'll just do it on just your random. Like, well, they'll, they'll give the specifics in the test that they yeah. do, man. But normally, yeah. it's just general people. It's not yeah. a, a guy who weighs one hundred and thirty like kilos I mean, lean. It'll, it's, they'll have like a group of fifty guys, yeah. age twenty to twenty-four, who are not weight trained. Yeah. Um, then they'll they won't really give a whole lot of other specifics. Mm. Um, I mean, I can't really think of too many ingredients that are really weight-based, to be honest. Uh, be there'd be things like hormonal stuff can be. I mean, hormonal stuff, yes. Um, and but then, but things such as like beta alanine, for example. Yeah. They say, well, now that you know the daily dose is around six point four grams, but mm. shit, you can have more than that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all it's going to do is just saturate your your body yeah. with more or saturate it quicker. Then the thing as well is if you look at stuff like stimulants, is it's not actually working on the muscles, it's no. working on your nervous system. Yep. And everyone's got the same nervous system. Yeah, and all you're going to do is by taking more of it is just overstimulate your yeah. nervous system. So, so I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a 60 kilo girl, it just depends on your stimulant tolerance and those kind of things really because mm. it's on the central nervous system, whatever those there may be. Yeah. But really those studies, yeah, they, they don't do it on specific weights. So they just mm. do it on a, a group yeah. of people and give no real 
weights, I guess. No, no, no. There's no, and the, the, yeah, there's no rule set like set of thumb to say you know a 60 kilo girl should be taking this. That's the dose they've said is clinical. Um, but you know, there's 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 always room to move there, man. So mm. you know, if you're a bigger person, you can just take obviously take a little bit more of it. Mm. All right, uh, Graham Solly. Graham 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 from uh, Muldura in Victoria. Hello to all the. Do you know the, Graham? I wait. I haven't been back to Muldura for like fucking. Fuck. S- fucking. I do you don't know what's funny? Do you know what's funny is that every time someone comes in there from I'm from Muldura, I'm like, do you know Joel? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's a hick ass country town yeah. with five people. No, that's the thing, like, there's 100,000, 50,000 people in Muldura. Yeah, yeah, it's a big right, place, man. But, anyway. but um, yeah, hello to all the people back in Muldura, my hometown. I, I was back there a little while ago, but mm. haven't lived there for a long time. Uh, what is your opinion on DIM as an aromatized inhibitor? I see it used in a lot of hormonal products and used, uh, but I've never used it without um, a test boosting supplement, so it's hard to pin its efficacy. Uh, one recent study. Uh, is it actually a test blocker? Um, I think the guys from ATP Science um, said that one. And increase your estrogen levels. If not dim, uh, what would you say is the single breast best AI um, ingredient available in the Australian market? Big question. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I've never used it on as a standalone product. No. I mean, it's always no. been in something. Yeah. Um, but man, proving it works at a, at a very lower dosage than what people actually say. And I think that's what you're alluding to, Graham, is that um, the guys did a, at ATP did a, um, did a, a, did a, a podcast on DIM um, a little while ago. And the dosage that they recommended to take was around 100 milligrams of DIM per day. Anything higher than that, it can actually start to block testosterone. So it can be good. But again, this works back to the dosage that you're taking per day. Mm. Um, the best uh, AI ingredient available in the Australian market. What do you reckon? Oh, man, Dim. You know, Dim's proven that it actually works. You just have to get the dosage of it right. Mm. Um, but man, I honestly, I'd be using um, rather than using single ingredients, man, I'd be looking at uh, actual products. Yeah. You know, things like Core Hard, um, even um, Alpha Prime, Prime from um, I mean, from ATP like, Science. Yeah. I've liked both those products, and they both work really well for me. Thing um, is, the thing is, is they put them in there and they work synergistically with a lot of exactly, the other ingredients. Exactly, yeah, it's not just one ingredient. So, I mean, that's the thing I'd be going for, is I'd be going for a product. Yeah, um, rather than a one what's ingredient. What's MTS's new one? Um, not Insurgent. Um, Tyrant. Tyrant. Yeah. Um, I mean, they've got, that's got DIM in it as well. If yep. you're looking for one with DIM in it that we do stock. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely I'd be going for a product like Core Hard or Alpha Prime if I'm looking for as an all-in-one Yep, yep, definitely, product. man. I wouldn't be looking for a single a ingredient. A single ingredient, no, 100%. All right, Richie McKinnon, this is a quick one. Hard or soft taco shells? Definitely soft. Soft? You fucking serious? Yeah. What? I hate, I don't like texture. I don't like hard What shit. the fuck? Who fucking <laughs> eats soft fucking taco shells? Oh, mate, well, I don't think we can be friends anymore. <laughs> hey, because you bite it and then it fucking crunches on your lap. And oh, my God. Front. Oh, <laughs> this is a fucking disaster. Richie, <laughs> hard fucking taco shells all the way, mate. That's I can't soft. believe that you just... Soft. I thought that was, a, that was a home run. Like, bang, <laughs> we're both answering that question. Move nah. on. Wow. Fuck, you learn something every day, don't you? Uh, Indiana Burgundy, Ron's cousin. Um, <laughs> my partner works night shift occasionally, but can't have caffeine or any stimulants. Is there a non-stimulant nootropic um, or any, or anything she could take? I'll be having just fuel pump. Is this this uh, is this for like at work or is I it? Guess when um, she goes to the gym, or maybe. when she goes to the gym? Um, there's a lot of nootropics that you can take, man. The issue with them is. Um, you know, you look at in raw ingredients like hoopazine yeah. and, and, you know, even Colleen. alpha GPC and all this stuff. It's, if you're looking at going to bed straight after, you're still going to have the neural effect or, you know, the brain activity. So, um, it's still going to keep your, your brain functioning. So you're going to have a lot of trouble getting to sleep anyway. Um, if you're looking for something, um, obviously to use like to train with so that you can go to sleep after, I'd be looking at something like fuel pump or peak X would be mm. my two best bets. Fuel yeah. pump. Um, is very, very complete. Still got some, some new tropics in there, but yeah, like I said, you have to be cautious if you're going to bed after um, that, you know, those, those I guess, cognitive enhancers can keep you awake yeah. at the same time. Well, that's, you know, if you look at Dilly, he ta- if he, that little shit takes too much choline, mate. Oh, he He's jabbering up. like a fucking bird in the tree and yeah. he, he can't sleep at night. Yeah. So, you know, that's why we banned him from taking choline because he just won't shut up. You want to have use Cobra 6. Do you still have Cobra 6? And you I used to like... But you could pinpoint every day when he'd had it. Yeah, you, 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 I'd up. look at you every day and go, yeah, he just had Cobra 6, didn't he? Because he wouldn't shut up. Uh, ben Edwards. Uh, ben from Melbourne. What's the uh, one thing you you like to do when Joe is away from the office travelling um, that you wouldn't do when he's there? Is there anything that we actually wouldn't do when he's here? There's one thing. What? 
we don't play music. Yeah, yeah, because his music selection is yeah. shit. Um, um, I just find, yeah, it's been good being in peace at work, I think. Obviously, yeah. you, you have your headphones on. I have right? my headphones on all the time, so it but, doesn't worry me. But I don't but have to listen to his music, which is, which is good. So, mm. um, And look, let's be honest, like his selection of music, I think it's gotten worse as the years have no, gone on. No, it's not that it's gotten worse, it's that rap's gotten shitter. Yeah, and he listens to the same shit. Every Comes day. in, oh man, listen to the new Migos or whatever yeah. the fuck it is. That's fucking and terrible. it just sounds like Steve farting on the snare drum. No, it probably sounds better than me farting. I right. would actually prefer to hear you fart on a snare drum. Let me do that on a YouTube post. Won't I it? still think it's going to get a million hits. <laughs> you, you just dropping one on a snare drum is going to be hilarious. Uh, Jared Hobson, um, the last meal you ate... Um, is the one meal you have to eat for the rest of your life, what was that meal? I could do that, man, because I eat it like two times a day. Yeah, it was my shake. You have your shake? That so was mine, shake, was, so yeah. mine was my usual lunch meal, so I'm not sure whether you guys have seen it, if you've watched Blakey's story. So I have uh, sweet potato, rice, capsicum, zucchini, cooked in chicken stock. Um, I had today with chicken um, and some avocado. Usually I'll have red meat, though, so usually that'll be steak. Could I eat that for every day for the rest of my life? Fuck yeah. I if couldn't. you could eat anything for the rest of your life, if you had to eat the one thing for the rest of your life, what would that meal be? Steak. Me too. Steak, chips, barbecue sauce. Bang. Just like that. I'd be fat as a house, but I would enjoy every meal. Oh, yeah. You can't, you know, cheat meal. No. Saturday night, what am I having? I'm having steak and chips. I went to TJ Friday's, had the Jack Daniels steak. Oh, nice. yeah. Oh, delicious. Yeah. Very, very nice. All right. Lyle, second last one. Uh, Joe and Keenan Evans, um, is it better to have isolates such as Rule One solely? Um, over a whey isolate blend such as gold standard, uh, what is the breakdown um, difference between the two? Um, do they do the same job? The, break, like, the difference between gold standard um, is like gold standard and like the MTS whey, core mm. pro, those kind of products are predominantly WPC yep. with, with a bit of WPUI. Yep. So um, if you look on the label, it'll tell you what kind of protein, it tells you the, the amounts that are in there. So yep. whatever protein is first is what protein it has the most mm. amount of. Um, those kind of proteins are generally WPC versus WPI, which is yep. why they do cost less. Um, because they're not just a straight WPI. Yep. Um, do they do uh, the same thing? They yes. do, yeah. yeah. Um, Essentially, they do. The main difference just is digestion rate of the yep. protein. Definitely. And yeah. some's going to have, well, the blend is going to have more lactose in there, Yeah, right? lactose. I mean, d they'll do the same thing. Yes. Do I know the difference? No. Sometimes on my stomach, depending on mm. what the protein is. Yep. Um, some that are high in lactose do upset my stomach a bit. Mm -hmm. um, something like a core ISO rule one, ISO 100 don't affect my stomach at all and yep. I can drink that all the time. Yep. Um, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't think you're going to see, you're not going to see any better gains from it. No, not at all. It's the same calories. Brain, so yeah. Same calories. Um, you're going to get the same result at the end of the day. It's just, yeah, just that, that extra lactose. I would, like just as a quick recommendation, man, I would look back at the price and say, you know, you could get a big bag of like gold standard wafer for almost the same price you can get a tub of mm. rule one isolate for. Um, if you're going to save a couple of bucks that you could use on another product, um, I'd definitely be doing that because you're going to get definitely a lot more gains from that. Yeah. All right, last question from Pierre, the buff Bobcat. Yes, Pierre, you do have the referee in the house because um, Joe is, he's not, I don't think he's cutting shapes. I think he's, still, <laughs> he's almost like sinking into the snow as he goes down the hill. Just so, I commented Joe to this as well, but did you see on your story when you were snowboarding, he yeah. rides goofy footed? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was weird. I was like, you're riding backwards, mate. You got to switch that around. Yeah. So he, but he reckons that it's more comfortable for him. He, says, oh, he, can, he said he can ride both ways, but it's, but I, kinda, I don't feel comfortable at all riding goofy footed. No, no. Oh, I can wakeboard Goofy, but it's only for a little bit and I've got to switch it around. Doesn't feel right, yeah, weird. Um, so we hear and see when Joe preps and wonders if you have a similar process. Sorry, this is for you, Neve. Apparently you're prepping at the moment. Yeah, I'm not prepping. See? Mate, he'll, he'll compete in about 2025. <laughs> Um, anyway, we're going to answer the question anyway. Do you have a similar process? Do you start taking fat burners a lot? Do you cycle um, off? Um, or do you just um, up the dosage for the times that you need them? Anyway, I uh, hope it's going strong and you're kicking ass, mate. P.S. I agree. The best tasting BCA sup is all day. You may have a good one, fellas. Stay massive. Lo lots of love, Pierre. Just for you, what's your best tasting all time supplement if you had to drink once for the rest of your life? I could be any supplement, but if you had to drink one stuff for the rest of your life based on taste. Based on taste. Does it have to be like a certain product? No. I said all day you made fruit punch. It is fucking delicious. And Joe said he hated it. Oh, <laughs> mate. You remember that sweet tea they did? <laughs> yeah. It was fucking incredible. Yeah. It was like I was sitting on like a like a lounge mm. chair <laughs> somewhere, like just, you know, sipping on a like mm. Long Island iced tea or some shit. Um, that's a tough one for me, man. That's... But yeah, that, that fruit punch was pretty good. Yeah. I don't know how you don't like that. Even the lemon lime tasted it's like good, lemon yeah. lime Gatorade. Yeah. Took me back to when I was playing footy. Yeah. Um, do um, you do anything different when you're trying to cut? Um, pretty much. So at the moment, I mean, I'm not 
comp prepping because the thing was is I know my limitations and I know I I don't have what it takes to match it with the big boys. Yeah. Um, I don't have, I don't want to do what it takes to get there. Mm. Be it like the training bit, or not training so much. I've tra- I you can, mate. I think you can. You can go into the gym with any one of those yeah. guys and hand them uh, their ass to them. Yeah, if you want but to. I mean, like dieting. Like I don't. Like I want to be able to go on each subway because yeah. it keeps me mentally sane. Mm. Um, I can still sit pretty lean. I'm probably sitting leaner than most of the population. I'd say. Yeah. Even eating what I eat. Um, yeah. The thing that I'll do is if I do want think if I do feel as I'm getting a little bit chubby or uh, put getting a bit fatter or anything like that, what I'll do is I'll fast. Mm-hmm. So I'll fast till like two o'clock or one o'clock for a couple of days, and I'll cut my carbs out for one to two days. Yeah, I'll find me in two days, three days, I'm back oh, like, at a good man. spot. Yeah, because I know my body well. Mm. Um, I'll cut out if I feel like it. I'll cut out that Subway and that McDonald's for a week or any whatever food I'm having post workout. Yeah. Or if it is you just clean up your diet a bit. Sushi, if it is Coles cookies, I'll clean up my diet, take that out, take out the carbs, put another salad and protein meal in post workout, mm. have a steak and protein or uh, sorry steak and salad or so that kind of meal. Chuck some nuts in their post workout. Yeah. Thing is, my diet, my body, like, sucks back in very quickly very, now. Yeah, yeah. But that's responsive. the thing, man. Because you do the amount of volume that you, in training that you do. Yeah. Um, it's going to change really quickly. So I don't think you'd have to change your process so much <coughs> with the supplements you take. Yeah. It's just more your diet, yeah, man. It's my diet. It really is. So and um, your diet, you know, you can change that really quickly. Yeah. Fuck. The other mate, thing that I've done since Joe's been gone and I've tightened up a lot since I haven't trained with him is I've been going back to push pull legs. Yeah. And I've actually noticed I've... Oh, that works better for you, though. Yeah, but I've dialed back in in the last week. Is yeah. And my body's kind of a lot leaner again. It's because I'm burning more calories. And it just works better for me. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, and that's like, you know, he goes through and he'll do like a session on biceps. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I can't do that. No. Like, the one session on biceps, I feel like it's, it's like half a workout. Yeah. So I'd, I'll do arms and then do it like a compound movement. But yeah, it's just Joe's way of training is just a little bit different to like your way of training and my way of training is still a little bit different yeah. again. But his again is just different. So you mm. have to find obviously this is again what works best for you. Yeah. Um, and then run with that. So the thing, yeah. So we, as I'll just uh, sum it up. So when I want to lean up, mm. I'll go to a push pull leg split. Yeah. Because I can burn more calories throughout my sessions. I'll go for a half hour to forty minute walk every morning, walking my dog. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll cut carbs out of majority of my meals still keep it just in my post-workout meal but I'll put those carbs as clean carbs mm. um, and then yeah try and fast till 10 or 11 o'clock in 10, 11, 12 as far as I can really but like yep. at least at least 11 or 12 yeah um, and yeah that just works well with me mm. um, so the thing is you have to find what works, works said, for you with Joel um, I mean he, he can have um, carbs every meal and you still say at the moment money, but yeah um, Thing is, then then you go and look at when I was doing F forty five though as well, and I could eat fucking even worse than what I'm eating now. You were eating like a shitload though. Yeah. You were eating like a pig. Yeah, and, and I, still was, getting leaner. Yeah, still getting yeah. leaner. So it's all the cardio yeah. you were doing, man. Mm. Sh- Ooh, guys, that's a wrap. <laughs> Episode one forty. <140, laughs> you, you shouldn't have ripped it up. It was one forty eight. <laughs> yeah, I'm positive I'm it was one forty eight of uh, of weekly word. The big fella isn't a, uh, isn't here. He's away. Uh, he's yeah, still away gonna, next week yeah, too, so right? So we're going to do this one, again. So. Um, so I hope you guys questions. enjoyed it. Yeah, Pretty much we might it. just fuck off the first bit, I reckon, and just do... We're just going to do Ask Neve, I think. Yeah. Back Ask in Neve. stocks, we'll, 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 we'll run through them in two seconds. Yeah. And Let's then we'll just, just do Ask Neve. We'll rapid fire. Rapid fire, bang, 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 bang. So if you have any questions for Swole myself, or any questions directed to Swole, I'll let him ask and answer a few. If no, mate, this is your show. If there's some directed you want from Swole that you want to know, that you've always wanted to ask the big boy, then throw it out there. Throw it out there. I'll answer it. Sexual orientation, weird shit. <laughs> How my love affair with Steve. I'll, I'll, I'll answer anything. Everything, everything. Everything. You got anything else you want to add, man? Make sure you hit the subscribe button, which is not actually there on the screen anymore. So don't do that. But turn on the post notifications, subscribe. Uh, make sure you ask a question. Make sure you jo- join the Master Joe's Facebook group. It's mm. a closed Facebook group, Team Master Joe's, but find it on uh, Facebook, where we answer a lot of stuff anyway, as it is. But then yep. you can answer more questions on Ask and Eve if you don't want to ask them down in the comment section down below. And um, yeah, make sure you tune in next week for Swallow Myself. That's a wrap. Where are we coming to from, Neve? Massajoes.com. Stay massive. <laughs>Thank you for tuning in to this video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Don't forget to check out our latest upload and our recommended video and be sure to subscribe to the Massive Joe's YouTube channel to stay up to date with all of our latest uploads.